Manitoba is now 8-3 and three and all alone in first place. Saskatchewan led this tournament for most of the week. Michelle Schneider from the Tartan Curling Club in Regina had won six before she lost her first. Now she has lost three in a row. Pat Sanders, the former world champion, now skipping the British Columbia rink, makes the hit to beat Saskatchewan, the final eight to six. And now Saskatchewan just hoping to stay alive in the final round. All alone in first place, Manitoba eight and three, followed by Saskatchewan, Team Canada, Nova Scotia. Who is going to make it through to the playoffs? We'll find out tonight as TSN proudly presents the most comprehensive curling coverage in Canada. It's the 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts. We're in the heartland of British Columbia, Kelowna, for this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts, and it's all brought to you by Scott Paper. We build our reputation around the house. And in our featured game in the 15th and final round, it's Alberta against Team Canada. Hello again, everybody. I'm Vic Rutter. We come down to this final round, and we have four teams chasing the first place team. And, of course, there are as many as six possibly could be into a tie-breaking situation. It all sorts itself out in this 15th and final round. There you see it. Manitoba 8-3, and three. Saskatchewan, Team Canada, Nova Scotia. Those three have the best chance, but British Columbia, New Brunswick with only four losses. Well, they are hanging tough and hoping that maybe one of those rinks up front will make a mistake. Joining me as always, Linda Moore and Ray Turnbull. And we talk about the teams that are back there and just waiting. We are going to sort it all out. It could be a very wild, could be a long night. It seems like it's the most complicated playoff picture I can remember. Usually there's a distinct winner. There may be a tiebreaker for second and third place, but the statistician's going to be very busy tonight. Let's talk a little bit about the game we're going to see. Team Canada, they uh, haven't won with maybe the kind of, uh, oh, the kind of way we would have expected. I maybe expect them to be more dominant. They've hiccuped their way here, but they are still the defending champions. They are, Vic, and it's not new for Heather Houston. Uh, they had to play two tiebreakers last year, then they went on to beat Michelle Schneider in the semifinal, and then Pat Sanders yeah. in the final, so it's not new for her. Uh, they've been fairly consistent all week, and uh, once you get to the semifinals of the tiebreakers, it's a whole new series. And Alberta and your friend, of course, Benny Ryan playing third, they will try to be the spoiler. So when we come back, we'll find out if Alberta can knock off Team Canada, who will make it through to the finals. Right now, we know that Manitoba's in with a record of 8-3. and three. There's more from Kelowna when we return to the 89 Scott Turnout of Hearts in just a minute. No two people are the same. When you need a loan, you should get a loan that fits you. My customers are as individual as the reasons for getting a loan. That's why being able to give you a choice is so important. We've got fixed or variable interest rates, and I can show you how to pay it off fast and save you money. You're doing us a favor when you choose CIBC. That's why we can usually give you the loan in 24 hours. Come on in. I'll prove it. Get us working for you. CIBC. The softness of a cotton ball is the softness of cotton now. Cotton now. It's the only one that lets you feel that cottony softness. The softness of cotton now. All right. You're about to graduate into the Purex building. So never forget, your mission in life is to be soft. Soft? Much softer. That's better. Now, present softness. With the pounded of little pillows in every sheet, it's two pie softness you can see. The Mabat Tanker, symbol of curling excellence in Canada. Five former world champions will compete, including Ontario's Russ Howard, Rick Folk of British Columbia, and Northern Ontario's Al Hackner, plus defending champion Pat Ryan returns, making the strongest field ever. Live and exclusive curling action from the national championship. Two draws daily, plus highlights from ongoing games. The Labatt Briar starts Sunday on TSN. Here are 
of the other games in this 15th and final round of 1989. Scott Turner of Hearts, BC against Newfoundland, a big game for BC. They're six and four, hoping some of the front runners will slip. Saskatchewan at seven and three, playing Quebec. New Brunswick against Yukon Northwest Territories. Heidi Hamlin from St. John, another six and four ring. They need some help. And PEI playing Nova Scotia. Colleen Jones from Halifax, seven and three. Manitoba has the night off. They are eight and three and in. Ontario will finish at four and seven. There are the two skips. Debbie Shermack is on the left. And Heather Houston from the Lakehead Ladies Curling Club is the defending champion. As we have seen all week, the team playing the Red Rocks will have the last stone in the first end. And so it is. The Team Canada lead. Tracy Kennedy right now the number one lead in this tournament at 80%. And Team Canada is playing one of the lion killers so far this week. Alberta has beaten both BC and New Brunswick to knock them down into the four loss category. Team Canada will have to be sharp tonight. Alberta's played much better the last couple of games than they really put it together this afternoon. Strong performance. the beginning of the game will be fairly wide open. Neither team wanting to take too many chances. The Alberta lead. Twyla yep, Pruden the makes up. the takeout. Yep, it will. Leaves her shooter top eight. Tracy Kennedy. Tracy's played very, very well all week long, as you mentioned. It's the number one lead in the event. And played uh, tremendous amount of uh, come arounds and soft shots well. It ran straight, didn't it? Okay. And slips right on through. We do, Jim, uh, don't we, Linda? We do. Every time we say they're going to make, make a good shot, it doesn't happen. I'm wondering if maybe Heather yeah, thought it was going to pull more, and it does start to move later in the game, but these first few ends, they find it's a little straighter. Twyla Pruden, the 21-year-old, former member of the 1985 Alberta Junior Women's Race. She has had there. national experience at a junior level. Uh, well, BC and uh, New Brunswick in particular will have their eyes uh, on the other sheets. Linda. That's, that's one danger. You that's have to right. make sure that you win or it's going to be no difference at all. I would think it'd be tough not to score a board watching this 15th and final round. This is the Team Canada second. This is Diane Adams, the number one second currently curling, 80%. Trying for the roll to the other side of the sheet. It's a good shot. I'm surprised it didn't rush that all the way. It's a call by Heather. I guess she must have moved the last couple of feet a little more than she expected. Especially after watching Tracy kind of run straight down there. Yeah, may have been a little afraid of that spot. The Alberta second is Diane Alexander. She is currently the number two ranked second here in Kelowna, curling at 77%. So we're going to see some of the best shooters in this tournament, in this game tonight. Well, a little break for Heather Houston here in the first end. Make sure you got normal, eh? Playing the outturn takeout and making sure that the weight's up in this first end. Diane Adams. So the rings are wide open again. It's one of those spots that once it starts to curl, it just keeps going very quickly. Well, this is the same sheet that we watched uh, Saskatchewan play on this afternoon wow. against uh, BC. And, and there's a couple, so we know it uh, fairly well. It's nice for us to get a look at it again. There's a couple of spots that really move. And as we go through the game, we'll try and point them out to our viewers. 
Diane Alexander and her second stone, the Alberta second, were in the first stand of this 15th and final round robin game here at the 1989 Scotch River Park, Kelowna, British Columbia. And of course, Ray, that movement earlier today and what we'll see tonight makes for a very exciting curling. I'm just going to ignore that. He's going behind it. We're going short. The familiar name of Lang. Well known to curling fans, this is Lorraine Lang. Yeah. Well, and the Team Canada third's well, first stone. They were discussing draw weight and it sounds quite keen for the first stand. Puts it into the T-line on the four foot. Didn't really tuck around the guard as they thought. Wide open for Penny to try and remove. I don't think we've seen Penny in the glasses this week. Those are her lucky red Olympic glasses. Now that you've mentioned the Olympics, should we talk about it a little bit? Uh, <laughs> Penny, a member of your team, Linda? She was. Uh, and a rather fantastic member, as I've mentioned before. Bit of a change for her, too. She played lead for us, and now she's playing third. Lorraine Lang and her second stone. shooter. Of course, we'll be keeping our eye on all the other games in this 15th round. You won't miss a thing. We'll show you highlights, keep you up to date on scores, and yeah, you'll know exactly who is doing what. Well, this, this is a good uh, chance uh, for Debbie Shermack to get around that corner guard she threw up earlier with Penny Ryan's last shot of this first end. Alberta with the advantage of last rock, of course, with an excellent opportunity to try and pick up the extra point, get off to a good start. See if they can get this one to move. It seems to move the most at the very end as it's dying. It just hangs on center for so long. Oh, it down there. Okay. I'll be interested to see tonight Ray Linda if What did she have? Heather Houston is any more aggressive this game that she has been through of the week. Come Sometimes we wonder about yeah. her going so for the throat. She has well, actually, she... We kind of listen to her for a bit here, Vic, and then comment on that. I you had here, eh? Yeah. Yeah, and I was really open, though. I came by that guard, like, by a foot and a half. So they've taken that size. They've cut her down about six inches. Last year in Fredericton, she really impressed me with, you know, how aggressive she was, actually, and how well she skipped. And, and she just hasn't been quite as offensive conscious here as, as I expected her to be. But sometimes, and I'm sure Linda would agree with this, sometimes you, you skip the way you feel. For example, you know, if you're not, if you just don't feel confident in your shots, you're obviously not going to be skipping yourself into a situation where you're going to have to make a big shot to get out of it if it doesn't work. So, you know, that's uh, many, many times you will call the game according to how you feel. And, and uh, maybe she just hasn't felt strong about her draw weight, for example, or? Well, in fact, we mentioned that last uh, one of the games we were doing. And as Heather Houston delivers her first stone here in the first end, that if in fact you are struggling, you may call the shot that you think you can make, not the one that you want to make. If you're struggling, especially with weight and draw weight, you'll play very wide open and clean. Right, a simplified game. One thing to note, Heather Houston curled 93% in the game that we just saw this afternoon, so I think maybe she may be more aggressive tonight knowing that yeah. she can make the shot. Got to win this one, uh, Linda. I think I can see three quarters of it. That one again didn't really curl right behind the guard. They can see most of the rock. 
We'll talk about some of the scenarios, the possible outcomes in this 15th round. And one of them would be, for example, if all three teams at 7-3 win tonight to join Manitoba with 8-3 records, well, then Manitoba would be declared the first place finisher. Saskatchewan would be second, and Team Canada would play Nova Scotia in a tiebreaker. That's one scenario. We'll talk about some others a little later. This is Debbie Shermack, the Alberta skip from the Shamrock Curling Club in Edmonton. And I must say that scenario was not easy to arrive by. They had to figure out who beat whom in order to try and place those teams. I can't remember when the top team has had three losses like this. Usually a team goes through with only one or two losses. really moved now because it got off the center line very, very early. Girls have to hold it up. They did. Good. They got it by. A little inside roll. Not much. You got it to that center line line just a little bit earlier than, than the other stones, uh, and, it, and it made a quick move, but good rush. She held it up all the way. And she had good weight on it. Yeah. That's really yeah. critical in this spot. That's the kind of shot that they were, you know, when you do pinch maybe a little bit, or maybe just don't get to the full room, and if you cut your weight on top of it, you, the combination is not a healthy one. Oh. Scoreboard watching. Big shot now for Team Canada. Don't want to fall behind early in this game. Trying to duplicate the shot we just saw. Rush being held right on the center line. Tell you what, I don't think there's. Uh, I think there's less showing than the uh, previous shot. Lorraine Lang putting down the brush for Heather Houston and her final stone here in the first end. Alberta does have the hammer. Our viewers can watch where she releases it on that center line and you'll see whether or not she's inside yeah. or outside. Looks like she might have been a little bit tight. <laughs> that was a real team effort. Yeah, it sure was. Pretty close to the bar. <laughs> you think that was pretty close to the guard? I think so. I didn't see much airspace between no. the guard and the shooter. Debbie Shermack would like to roll out, but this is a difficult spot. She has to roll a long way to get the blank. The old Kevin Adams again. Make it go away first. <laughs> the final stone of this yep. first stand. game for Team Canada. An update for you, the game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, PEI with the hammer, last two stones, final stone of Colleen Jones, skipped from the Halifax Curling Club, trying to roll over to that stone on the edge of the 12 dozen, final stone then, Kathy Gallant, Charlottetown Curling Club, will make the hit and stick for two, and PEI with the hammer jumps out to a 2-0 lead over Nova Scotia in a game that Nova Scotia really can't afford to lose. We'll have more from the 1989 Scott Tournament of Heart in just a minute. American Express has now made applying for membership as easy as picking up the phone. Yes, American Express. I'd like to apply for membership. Hi, American Express. Can I apply for the card right over the phone? Great. For those who qualify, the card comes with a world of privileges. Hi, American Express. Yes, I'd like to apply for the card. The privilege of knowing that there'll always be someone on call to help you. American Express, 
I seem to have lost my wallet with all my cards. 24 hours a day. I can have a new card for you by tomorrow. Oh, that would be great. Hi. I want to apply for the American Express card. Privileges that'll extend the free repair period offered under most manufacturer's warranties. I think I can fix it, honey. That's why I got buyer's insurance. American Express. I'd like to apply for the card. Privileges that give you an extra measure of financial flexibility. Aren't you glad we stayed an extra day? I'm glad we have the American Express card. Yes, I'd like you to take my application for membership. The privilege of knowing your reservation has been honored no matter how late you arrive. Oh, that's right. My flight was hours late. Luckily, my room was waiting for me. Hi, I'd like to apply for the card. The privilege of having a helping hand when you need it. We lost our card, our cash, even our passport. You've come to the right place. I can help you. That's great. To apply, simply call and say, American Express, I'd like to apply for membership. Members carry our promise of respect, recognition, and unsurpassed personal service. Just call 1-800-343-AMEX. We'll take your application over the phone and start processing it right away. Bangkok today? Yeah. Yeah, I'm packed. Membership has its privileges. So call 1-800-343-AMEX now. Update for you, the game between Saskatchewan and Quebec, final stone. Michelle Schneider, oh, they just get it by that long guard, makes the hit stick for one. And the ring from Tartan Curly Club, Regina, lead. Agnes Charette, 1-0. Here are all the scores then, Curly, 15th and final round here in Kelowna. Newfoundland steals one on British Columbia. Alberta with a 1-0 lead over Team Canada. Saskatchewan got one. New Brunswick, Heidi Hanlon trying to stay alive. Got a pair to lead the Yukon Northwest Territories. And you saw PEIs, too, ahead of Nova Scotia. As we return to our game, Alberta leading Team Canada, 1-0. And the shot of Diane Alexander, the Alberta second. The nose hit, and now the center guard. for a minute, but Team Canada is going to go around this. It's fairly close to the center line, and she thought of taking it off. This is the more aggressive yeah. Heather Houston we're seeing. This is quite aggressive because it's pretty tight to the ring, isn't it? I'm not surprised. You could hit that and flop just to the corner. Shot. And in the afternoon game, that's really how BC got on top of Saskatchewan. Every time they had last drop, they went around the guards, regardless of their position in front of the house. That looks like 21 and a half. Second, this is Diane Alexander and her second stone here in the second end. That was about all she could do with that kind of weight, was remove it and roll. She ended up rolling out. Oh, that way for sure there's no way I don't think she can get enough of it to, to hold the shooter. We know this sheet pretty well, and she could, uh, Heather could go around the corner guard because uh, it really moves there. You can really bury it there. Not that you can't bury it here, but you get a little more room after the guard. <laughs> Made a big move on her. I'm wondering if it caught something even, Ray. It's taking a funny spin. Yeah, it seemed to. Her first one was going to move. No. Penny Ryan. Her first stone, and 
Alberta with some stones to work with out front. Him. They can try to be aggressive, get in behind, get there first before Team Canada. at the back of the eight. We're seeing a lot of movement. I think we saw more of the other turn in the last game. I don't remember this particular shot happening. It was awesome. Okay. It's just curling very hard at the end. No, you're right. We saw a lot more movement towards the side than the game is on that chain. The rock came behind the T line. We can see. So uh, we look That's down the there. So okay, they're going to just try and draw to it. I got a ton more ice than Penny has. There's a look. Lorraine Lang. Boy, look at it start to move now. Got the nice weight so they get it by. Here it comes. Oh, is this a little short? Yeah, it's going to be a little short, I think. No, I think they've got there. You think so? Let's be sure Max has a look. A good look at it from the cameras above the sheet. What do you think, Linda? Yellow? It looks like yellow. There's yeah. a couple of nice yeah. things about this shot, though. It's not behind the sea line, so the other team can't draw to it. They have to play it tight by a yellow guard that we can see. If they rack on the yellow guard, it might even be promoted into the rings on the red one, or at least still sit as a corner guard. It's not an easy shot. Play halfway. That's a pretty hard shot. No? What do you, you guys, what do you, you guys think? Debbie's talking about hack weight. Yeah. I don't you can, you can only see a corner of the stone. Debbie shot it through. You could run, uh, you know, run the, the two yellow. Uh, you could drove it back onto the red one. Well, as Linda suggests, though, Jeff, she has to be careful about hitting the front yellow one, or you'll drive it to, over onto the red one, and it could spin into the ring. It would only be third shot, but... That's the advantage of last rock. Alberta is it's anxious to have a whole bunch of stones in play. I don't know if I like it. <laughs> no, I, She's still not sure, is she? No. It is a tough shot. Second stone for Alberta's Penny Ryan here in the second half. And that's the other danger. Yeah, she didn't like it. Wasn't sure of it. Yeah, but such a little piece of the rock showing. You're either going to be on the guard or by it so easily. Oh, it would have it come with that weight. If I would have rushed on the front one, I would have knocked them in and they would have been sitting too. No, not the angle knock, because you would have been back on our red one. We can, we can just move for a line, like, even if we're light, right? We're okay. You either have to make up your mind if you're, yeah. if you're playing this or you're playing the top, though. Let's try the top. Size is to guard it, uh, Linda? Actually, I heard them say they're going to play the tap. Tap it back. Tap it back and then roll to the... Oh, they got a tough shot, eh? It's in such a nice position right now. Do you want to go to the other side? I'm sure if the back red rock wasn't so close to the ring, I would rather back than yeah. the side. It's an interesting situation. I don't care how experienced you are. It's just 
a, a very, very difficult situation. You, you draw to the other side, you leave it in the open, they get the like hit and roll behind. They can only see a quarter of it. Like, they got the peel and that's it. Okay, if Trump is not going around that corner guard, we don't get second shot. Yeah, if you no. put it on the T line, they got the hit and roll right, right on the top. Right. That was maybe. Okay. The only problem is, Heather, they've got that bump, eh? Yeah, I know. You gotta be right here. Is important or something. <laughs> uh, yeah. okay. You heard Heather talk yeah. about going this way and sitting over here, but the problem was she couldn't be second shot. And also, she talked about if you do that and you don't get it buried, they get the hit and roll in this area for you. They talked a little bit about maybe playing the guard. They also mentioned maybe coming down and, and just tapping this back like so. And I think that's what they decided to do try and move yeah. this rock back and sit in this area here. As soon as it wasn't coming onto the rock, they, I think, should have been sweeping it, Ray. They could have maybe gotten it by that one. You should see behind it. There's no way for uh, Libby Shermack to get that out of there until they set this double up. Alberta leading 1 0. This will be the first skip stone from Debbie Shermack. a big movement on them because they were outside all the way and they stayed off it. That's happened in about three rocks this end. They've said, whoa, and it's just taken off. There must be a little spot there. And now the opportunity for Canada. Heather yeah, Houston. Yeah, yeah. Looks like it's hanging there. Well, it's a dangerous shot to leave there. They could tap it back on you. Yeah, I just left it a bit too long and it just took off. Okay. I didn't expect it to take off like that. Pretty cool setting. Yeah. Pardon? Lorraine so talked herself out of that shot. Like, even the tick on the guard's not a bad shot. We're, play we're coming playing the come around on the one in the top 12. You got a guess for what weight is out here? 21? Yeah, I'm a long way out. Yeah. Heather Houston and her first stone here in the second half. We're playing the out turn come around, coming around the front red rock. She's guessing weight because she's a little bit farther out than any of the other rocks have been. Yeah. I saw this afternoon on the sheet when he gets the frost, okay. it just bogs oh, down like with sand. to curl in. She was a little bit farther out. Right. Didn't get the spot that has all the curls. That looked like it fell, didn't it? I wonder if you should take the other turn. We're looking at the hit and roll. If they get the roll behind it, it'll be very difficult. 14 pounds. didn't curl much, so that dropper's never curled much. Yeah, I just 
keep it clean. Can she get a hit and flip in behind towards the center line? Oh, sure. I'm sure she can do that. She hasn't taken very much ice. She's just outside that spot of the curl. There was nobody really gave us a clear indication which one of those stones top and back of eight foot is shot. Well, I think uh, Team Canada's blind too now. No. It's the curl. Yes. No. This is the final stone for Alberta and Debbie Shermack. Team Canada has the hammer. There's the hit, and she stays right there. Team Canada's still lying one, but it's pretty hard to draw. So I think you'll probably find Heather play the hit and uh, the hit and roll in towards the forefoot to get her second point. And, uh, Hmm? Show this That's girl hung so long. I don't think she wants to worry about the line on this one. Team Canada's line one at this point. She's playing this hit and roll to the forefoot for her second point. And that's really all she has. There's no place to draw at all. The final stone of this second Whoa. end, a chance for two for the defending champions from the Lakehead Ladies Curling Club in Thunder Bay. She needs a little roll now. There's the hit, the roll inside. Two it is, the indication, and Heather Houston comes through with the big shot here in the second, and Team Canada leads Alberta 2-1. to one. An update for you on the game between Prince Edward Island and Nova Scotia, PEI leading 2-0 as they play the second. This the stone of Kathy Gallant. Makes the hit at the top. Nova Scotia would go on to pick up one, and it's 2-1 to one now, PEI leading Nova Scotia as they play the third. We'll have more from this 1989 Scott Turner of Heart in just a minute. Oh, you need something to work on that coldy sore throat. Sure do. Vicks helps because Vicks brings soothing relief to stuffy noses, nipples, coughs, colds that won't make you sleep, and sore throats. Like Vicks menthol throat drop. Tastes good. Feel then dissolve slowly into an anesthetic syrup and soothe that sore throat. Calm those rumps and make you feel like someone cares. Because someone does. It's soothing cold relief. I was practicing my hook shot when she walked in. Looks like we're working together. Brains, talent, she had everything. This story's hot. Including bad breath. Something wrong? I moved to the right, the left. There was no escape. Excuse me. Somebody like her? How could I forget scope? Hello, good taste, goodbye, bad breath. Well, I'll show him. Oh, no, not again. Hi. Her breath. I figured that. Right. For a positive reaction, the power of scope. I always said there's nothing like a smart dame with great taste. Friday, roll into the weekend with TSN. Two-wheeled speedsters battle time and distance in a 24-hour endurance race. Action that rides on the edge of the bowl door. The NASCAR circuit heads into a new year, and the inside track to the action is as close as your television. Highlights and features on Speed Week. Then the nation's best female curlers head toward a national championship. See exclusive semifinal action of the Scott Tournament of Hearts. Friday, the place to be is TSN. Do you think you could find this man a seat? Over here, Pat. Over here, Pat. <laughs> Pat Ryan turning around, looking at the games over here. The wife is playing over here, Pat. Pat Ryan will be up and talk a little bit with Ray and I in just a minute. Update for you. Saskatchewan against Quebec. Final stone for Michelle Schneider. And she'll come up a little late. 
Oh boy. Second last stone, and here it is for Agnes Charette of the Buckingham Curling Club. As she'll draw in, and she'll pick up her one. And so after two complete, they're playing the third now. It is 1-1. One, one. All the scores now still early in this 15th and final round of this 1989. Scott Turner the parts. BC 4-1 over Newfoundland. In our game, it's 2-1. 1-1, one. One, one, Saskatchewan, Quebec as they play the third. New Brunswick with a 2-1 lead over the territories as they play the third. And PEI with a 2-1 lead over Nova Scotia also in the third. Well, Linda Debbie Schermack had a couple chances to sort of to get out of that, you know. She had the chance of that double, and it just uh, wouldn't curl for her, or actually curl a little too much, I guess. And then uh, she had a chance for the hit and roll, the roll we saw uh, Heather Houston get, which would have uh, kind of saved the situation for her, too. But Heather made a good shot, a good hit and roll, and two points. Sometimes you get them, and sometimes you don't. Of course, it was a little early in the game to know the ice as precisely as perhaps Debbie Schermack needed for those shots. point when we talked about the fact that uh, Heather Houston who did struggle a little bit during the week uh, when I say struggle she just wasn't as effective as you know as we've seen her in the past or as consistent but you made an excellent point when you mentioned Linda that you know she drove 93 percent this afternoon yeah. what a nice thing that's time to get it going if you're going to get it going and it's to her credit because we saw one game where she was struggling through the, through the first half and she came right back with a great second half it's not easy to do that and now she's coming back strong in all the games She's, of course, a great lady, and she's been a great ambassador for curling, being the Team Canada over this past year. The house is wide open. Third end action with Team Canada leading 2-1. I really think it's terrific what the, the Scott and the Canadian ladies have done, you know, letting the defending champion come back each year and defend their title. I think it's an absolute positive step for our sport. Well, I really liked it. Even though we didn't make it through the final, I still think it was a great opportunity. The Team Canada third. This is Lorraine Lang and her first stone. And we were lucky enough to enjoy a trip to Switzerland to Team Canada this year. Our Olympic team from last year went as for this Team Canada. And the Ladon Funk team, which is the junior girls team that will be representing Canada in the Junior World Championship. We all had a cup of tea on the mountains in Grindelwald. Grindelwald. You probably didn't have any fun, I would imagine. Oh, it was just <laughs> a small <amount. laughs> I want to tell everybody that Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, blanked their third end, so they're playing the fourth now, and it's PEI 2, Nova Scotia 1. Penny Ryan, her first stone, makes the nose hit, sit top 12 center line. Yours <laughs> came off, Ajax. Yeah. Debbie Shermack over the shoulder and keeping a close eye on the ice call for Lorraine Lang. Oh. Second Whoa. stroke. Whoa. Heather always looks like she's freezing to death. <laughs> she has a sweater bundled right up her neck. Mind you, it's a little chilly here tonight. More so for us, perhaps, than the curlers. sweeping we heard the indication that it was to be kept clean that means they lightly dust it with the brushes making sure nothing gets underneath the rock and then at the end when it needed more sweeping they brushed it hard yeah that's right they're not brushing it to hold it in any way they're just brushing to make sure that there's no debris just keep it clean and stay in position
Skip Stones to come here in the third end. Team Canada leading two to one. Yeah, we'll keep them down. Yeah. Normal. wide open end than this. I would have thought maybe Debbie would play a little bit more. You know, she really has nothing to lose. I thought maybe she might really force Heather. She's certainly waiting her time, looking for a miss or a good opportunity. There, and there is lots of time. That's a good point. It's my first draw. Oh, here goes one of those opportunities, even though the rock is close to the ring. Seems like it's heavy. Nice down the spot. Here comes the come around. Pretty normal now for time. Okay. Penny holding the room and she's ready with the stopwatch. They've discussed the times for draw weight using the stopwatch. Haven't had a lot of chance to get those times yet. Debbie Sherman. 31 year old pharmacist had national experience as well, but at a mixed level as a part of the Alberta rink in 1984. This will be her first stone here in the third end. Lots of room. Room. Lots of room. Lots of room, guys. Lots of room. Let it bend. Lots of room means it needs to curl. Yeah, bring it back. Take it to the back. Yeah, bring it right back. All the way, Curry does. Bring it back. Curry. Oh, Comes up very late again. Back of the eight foot. the weight on that takeout ray and the weight will be the critical thing as she's coming down the fairly straight side and then it will start to break. This bumper. This bumper. Vic, you heard uh, Linda and I talk uh, in previous games about jumping on the stone too quickly. This is one of those cases where you, you know, you've got to wait for it to get to that center line. You've got to be careful not to yes. jump all over it too fast. And if you're a sweeper, Once it starts, then you go with it. You want to stay close by, I would think. Huh? Oh, yeah, for sure. Tracy Kennedy, Whoa. Diane Adams work in the brush. Can they get it by? They do. Right up on top. Nice shot by Heather Houston. Hot tonight, isn't she, Linda? That was very good controlled weight. And, and they really communicated well on that, because that is that is one of those kind of stones that if you jump on it quickly, it straightens it up, and it never gets to the center line, and then it holds too long. But they let it come, they got to the center line, and they brushed it in. Looking at how much it's showing, just a little piece is showing. Yeah, she actually got a little bit outside room behind that guard. See that much of it? Yeah. For normal, that should be pretty good. This last rock, then, there's, you know, there's the option here of just coming down, sitting in the top of the fourth foot, playing the straight draw here as opposed to hitting this. But this is the last rock, I'm saying. I don't think that one at the top of the 12 is uh, fighting at all. Normal. You just want to pick it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess she's looking for the blank. She could draw for the she one if she wasn't one. sure that she could make the shot. Team still 
it don't need to Unless you borrow one from the other sheep. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Sometimes you need those ones that you don't have. This will be the final stone of this third end. 2-1. Team Canada leading Alberta. Yeah. Yep. And Edmonton, Debbie Sherback. Really working hard to get it by that guard just off the center line, and they won't do it. And it'll be a steal of one for Team Canada here in the third end. And as they go to the fourth, it is now a 3-1 lead for Heather Houston, who made a beautiful shot with her last stone. An update for you in the game between Saskatchewan and Quebec in a 1-1 tie as they play the third end. And this is the final stone for the skip Michelle Schneider out of the Tartan Curling Club in Regina. Trying to hold it up, trying to hold it up. They'll make the takeout, roll the shooter out as well, but they do score one. See that red stone just behind the TSN? That's now two to one, Saskatchewan, as they go to the fourth. We'll have more from Kelowna when we come back. the rock the weight looks very good it's starting to curl nicely now through this tv offer the most complete the most exciting the most informative curling video ever produced what a shot ed lukowitz has done it again it's the most professional curling video yet from a former world champion and winner of over 40 major curling events labasse presents the world's best curling video ed lukowitz curling tips curling is one of the fastest growing sports in the world and this video is the most complete curling video ever produced. Equipment, technique, strategy, and counter strategy. Every aspect of curling is covered in the Ed Lukowicz Curling Tips video. Order yours now. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-387-8034. Or send $39.95 plus $4 shipping to Curling Tips, Post Office Box 8281, Station F, Calgary, Alberta. T2J 2V4. Visa, MasterCard, and American Express welcome. Toronto, call 449-8888. Let's bring you up to date now all the scores here in the 15th round of the Scott Tournament of Hearts. British Columbia by two over Newfoundland as they play in the fourth. Canada with a steal of one to lead Alberta 3-1. Saskatchewan has moved in front of Quebec. New Brunswick, Heidi Hanlon needs a break. She needs somebody to lose if she hopes to get into a playoff. Leading 6-1 over Utah Northwest Territories and PEI leading by one over Nova Scotia as they play the fourth end. We're at the Memorial Arena in Kelowna, British Columbia for this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts, our feature game, Alberta, against the defending champions, Team Canada. A couple of center line guards, and this is Team Canada second, Diane Adams. And joining Ray and I now, we welcome Pat Ryan. Nice to see you. Thanks, Vic. Nice to be we'll, here. We'll spend some more time with you next week in... Uh, in Saskatoon at the Briar as you skip the Alberta rink. I guess some of the best in summer saying, of course, it is the best field ever. You think so? Well, certainly name-wise, it, uh, it looks as though uh, we'll certainly have our hands full. When you talk about people like uh, Rick Folk, there's Al Hackner there, there is Russ Howard, Ragnar Camp, uh, or Mellis or Chuck, Mellis Chuck you five, four, 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 <laughs> four, five former world champions. It's going to be very, uh, very good. Pat, you've had a chance to throw a few uh, rocks here this week on this arena ice. Is that, uh, that must help a little bit in your preparation for next yeah. week. Well, I, th I think so, Ray. The uh, arena atmosphere is so nice. It's nice to practice under. and It's very easy to get into the, the feel of the ice for me. 
uh, it's maybe a little bit of an advantage uh, having a chance to get used to it here this week. Uh, maybe it'll make up for the disadvantage I've got being separated yeah. from my team. Okay, let's talk a little bit That's about right, that. Too, if people yeah. don't know that uh, you will represent Alberta, and that's where you qualified, and, and of course you lived in Edmonton for so many years, but uh, now you're living here in Kelowna and uh, taking a new job as an administrator with the hospital? Yeah, it's, well, it's the Director of Financial Services for the, the Kelowna General Hospital. Come around in between, eh? And now Rick Folk lives here. Pick? Tell us, we were, Ray and I were wondering, is there enough room in Kelowna <laughs> for two of the best shooters in the game? I think so. There's, there's a lot of good curlers here in town, yeah. I've found out since I, uh, since I arrived. And uh, I'm not sure what my plans will be for next year, but uh, I would imagine that with Rick having so much success this year, making it to Briar, that his team will be... Uh, basically decided on for next year, so probably the chances of us playing together are, are rather slim at this point. Does it feel like that, Pat? How do you feel? What do you think will make it to the playoffs, for example, the field you have in Brandon? Uh, how many losses uh, do you think you can afford to the field like that? I, mean, I know it varies year to year and everything, but it's, uh, it is a strong field. Uh, it's so hard to say. It's just like this uh, competition here. If a couple of games had gone a different way, then even teams that were six and five might have had an opportunity to get a playoff. It, with a good field, you normally have uh, a, a lot of losses handed out to uh, to everybody, and uh, usually the last game sh should be real interesting, just like it's proving to be here tonight. It's a terrific week here. The ice has made it so interesting too, because it works both ways. It's a little tricky, and you know it's, it helps the people that know how to read the ice. You know the the skips with a little bit more experience, and and uh, reading ice is, is a, such a big part of this game. And it's always difficult, I think. Uh, we've seen you when you've watched your wife Penny play. You uh, you sweat it out just as much as you were playing. <laughs> I used to, but not anymore, Vic. I, uh, I I don't really get myself involved in games. If I do, it just uh, it's just too hard on my nerves. I just uh, more or less come down to the rink, enjoy myself, just like any other spectator. And I don't I don't live and die on every shot anymore. Now well, we just Nick, let's run that over that again. <laughs> he was a little uptight when she was playing for all that dough and Brandon. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, that, that was a bit of a that's a little story. different. <laughs> <laughs> I'll agree with you on that. <laughs> There's wife, Penny. Now we want to tell the guys back in Edmonton, uh, Donnie Waltrip, Donnie McKenzie, Randy Furby, that yes, Pat, just because he is away, has been practicing, fellas. Oh, he has been practicing. Faithfully. Every night he comes out after all the games are over and throws. And last night Penny was out putting the, the brush it's down. Good, lots of junk. <laughs> it's uh, it is good ice pick. Uh, it moves both ways. Yeah. It's the nicest uh, or of the nicest arena ices I've uh, played on a number of times. Ram. I've been to the Briars. Oh. Curls really nice. It's easy to read and you can you can really get a good percentage game going on. Lorraine Lang, the Team Canada third. This is her first stone. Trying to wrap it around a center line guard. It's ironic that uh, your wife, of course, is playing is playing third, and Ricky Lang, former world champion, with Al Hackner, his wife, of course, part of this rink, and playing third as well. And he's here. It's it's funny, Vic. Last night, Rick was uh, standing there behind the sheet with me, and. He was cheering his hardest for Penny to win, and, and now he's down behind there, and he's cheering his hardest for Penny to lose. <laughs> <and> it, <laughs> but it finally, it finally dawned on me why. Right. We didn't mention Al Hacker, by the way. That is what an insult went ran through that list. Yeah. Al Hacker from Northern oh. Ontario, of course, a two-time world champion. Hurry. Yeah. Sorry, Al. Hurry. Hurry. He also Hurry. will be in Saskatoon. Hurry. 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 This is Penny Ryan's Hurry. first stone. Once they start to come, uh, Pat, they, re they really come, don't they? Uh, we want you to be analysts here, if you could, for us. Pat, this is the wife's delivery. Analyze it. Tell us what she does. Oh, it looks to me like she's going to throw it a little inside here and probably wreck on the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. That's You know, that's how Ray got this far. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Well, listen, we certainly wish you uh, all the best of luck because we are looking so forward to Saskatoon and the people there and the uh, the atmosphere that we know will be uh, part of that uh, briar with a tremendous field. It's uh, going to be a very exciting week, and it starts all on Sunday afternoon. I think it's going to be one of the biggest experiences for, for me and for our team to be a part of the biggest briar ever. And 
and uh, who knows if it's going to be the best briar ever. I think it's going to be hard not to be the best briar ever with 10,000 seats sold out and all these big names. It's going to be great. Lorraine Lang and her second stone. Uh, Pat Ryan, we certainly wish you all the very best. Thank you very much. Safe trip to Saskatoon, and we will see you there starting on Sunday. I might have to take this as a, as a hint of you. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a nice kiss off? I was just getting comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It's been a lot yeah, of fun, thank guys. You, sir. Thank we'll see you next week, Patty. You bet. Another chance at that world championship. Oh, there's no question. Who wouldn't? Yeah. But you know, it, but, I mean, having done so well in Lausanne as he did, and then having to come up just a little short in the in the final. That was probably one of the greatest curling games I've ever had the experience of watching those extra final. Michael Ransell from Norway and Pat Ryan. And there was just, I mean, who will never, ever, ever forget his you know, triple takeout in the sixth end, where he killed all three rocks and rolled into the for shot rock. It was Sensational shot, and then uh, I go Ramsdale double in the eighth end to pick up those two points to take control. The game went back and forth. It was a sensational curling. Hurry, 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 Penny Ryan makes the takeout at the back of the 12. Alberta still yeah. lying one, and now it's that stone in the 12 foot on the left hand side, the red stone. I think we're going to have to do this anyway. The question is whether Heather Houston can yeah. see any part of it here and get to it. Yeah. Well, I don't think she can think with the outturn. Uh, such a difficult spot way out there in the frost. I think Heather's just going to play the draw and come around. There's a good look at 22? it. Yeah. It's just too difficult to play the outturn coming into it from the outside in. So she's just going to play the come around, try and draw around the yellow card that sits in front of the rings. About 11 o'clock, just I in front know. of the 11 o'clock position. Just every time I When we talk about the thing. house, of course, the 12 o'clock is at the top and you move around the face of the clock. 22? Going around, yeah. The only trouble is... Well, I'd like to play it here, and then if at least I'm short... Heather Houston and her first stone here in the Lots fourth end. Team Canada leading Lots Alberta 3-1. Tons of room. Tons of room. Maybe lots of room, but the girls don't. Sure, it's okay, guys. I think there's a lot of weight on it. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's okay. Heather's yeah. saying that's okay, that thinking that she could like use that, that if she has to with her next one. But I, gotta well, I think she wanted it in there. There? Oh, no. Here, both here. Yeah, those guards are all moved now. They're all moved. No, can't throw 22 out there. No. Well, I haven't had that one. I've only had um, the outturn. Mm -hmm. I thought we were close enough to center line, and it would be alright. Yeah. Debbie Shermack settles in. This will be her first stone. T line. Try to go the other way, it looks like. Debbie's going to come down in this area here, and she said T line right into that area right there. She can lie to here. She has advantage of last rock. Good chance to tie this game up. Line's good. Now it starts to move now. As soon as it gets to the center yeah. line, you can see it come. 
Wait for it, she says. center line. We haven't really seen it down center. Yeah. It didn't curl and it didn't break late as we've seen before. Well, I tell you what, when Pat uh, Ryan gives it a, the ice a good recommendation, uh, he knows his ice and he likes it to curl. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's a little bit narrow though. I'm playing bumper. Okay. feeling as well, Ray, he's looking forward to it. He seems to be a little reserved about it, but I know he's, uh, he'd love to play some of those. Well, games. I think Linda can tell you that you get kind of excited when you know you're going into a, you know, a bond spill or in particular a Canadian yeah. championship where the, with your peers, with all the top teams in the country. It really is, you know, you know it's going to be difficult, you know it's going to be hard, but you know you're playing the best in the world. And, and that in itself is exciting. You know, we're amateurs, so we don't play the, the game for a living, and so you get that extra that extra feeling out of playing against the you know, teams of that level. This will be the final stone for Team Canada. Heather Houston here in the fourth. Alberta has the hammer. Yep. Three. Three. Whoa. 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 Calling for bumper weight. What's the roll here? Shot. I think she pushed the rock far enough too. It was close. It's hard for us to tell you know, who's second shot. Yeah, but oh. Everybody having a good look. Question is the two stones on the right side, top and bottom. What 12. can you see? Any of this? Shot stone. The well, second shot is clear. It's the third shot they were yeah, looking at. Trying to determine how much is open we'll beside the guard. Quarter of it. We'll play this. Yeah. We'll play a heavy, heavy yeah. draw. We'll play the draw for sure. Yeah. I think Heather got enough of a roll. They're not looking to try and move that one for three. They're yeah, just that's talking a, about the draw. That's a good look at it now from behind. You can see it. It's uh, okay. fully in behind the guards. It's a great roll by Heather. I think Heather Houston just the shot. Let's play the draw for sure and then. Final stone of this fourth end. And Alberta's Debbie Shermack. She's having to move out a little bit wider than the, what we've seen so far. Good curl. Just the draw. Just. Hurry! Just to fight the butt. And she's gone out into a new path. I yeah, just don't think she has enough weight. It's going to die before it even. Reaches the rings. It's a steal of one for yellow, and yellow is Team Canada. So that's two straight steals of single points. And now the defending champion, Heather Houston, leads four to one over this lady, Debbie Shermack, and Alberta. An update for you on the game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, 2 1 PEI leading as they play the fourth. We want to show you the last two stones. Nova Scotia, Colleen Jones makes the hit. And now it's Kathy Gallant with her stone, and she'll wreck out in front. Steal of one for Nova Scotia, and it's all tied up. It's 2-2. Nova Scotia trying to stay alive. We'll have more from Kelowna in just a minute. How would you explain it? A woman in Wisconsin is doing the dishes when suddenly she's possessed by a terrifying feeling. She's positive that her young daughter has just been in an accident. 
she quickly makes a desperate phone call, only to learn that her feeling was true. How would you explain this? A dozen people around the world who never met each other describe an encounter with a being from space, and their descriptions of the creature match almost exactly. And how do you explain this? A man's heart stops beating in a hospital, and he sees a blinding light that doesn't frighten him, but fills him with an indescribable feeling of peace. And how can you explain the growing number of people who feel that they've had a brush with something beyond our everyday understanding? Maybe no one can fully explain these things, but they can no longer be ignored. That's why Time Life takes a serious look into this world with a remarkable new series, Mysteries of the Unknown, to provide an objective and comprehensive look at what may lie beyond our ordinary reality. How can you explain this? Four men are drawn to an ancient Anglo-Saxon fort, site of a fierce battle. They enter the shadows of a ring of trees, and without warning, one of them is grabbed by an unseen force, lifted five feet in the air, and suspended for 30 full seconds. There are so many hints of a world more remarkable than we ever imagined, and of abilities that we barely suspect. Send for your first volume on a free trial basis and see if you can explain these things away. To order your first book, Mystic Places, call 1-800-255-8400. Examine it for 10 days. Keep it and pay just $16.99 plus shipping and handling. Other books will follow. One about every other month. Keep only the ones you want. Cancel any time. Call 1-800-255-8400. Saskatchewan and Quebec 2-1. Saskatchewan leading play in the fourth. Final stone, Agnes Shedet. The Buckingham Curling Club about 20 miles from Ottawa. The open draw, trying to draw it back. Joan Stricker, she can't, and it's one for Quebec. They're all tied up 2-2 as they play the fifth. All right, here are all the scores for you for um, this 15th and final round. Robin Draw, British Columbia now by four over Newfoundland. Canada with the two straight steals, leading 4-1 over Alberta. Saskatchewan, Quebec, the 2-2 tie. Look at New Brunswick, Heidi Hanlon making the best of her chance, leading 8-4 over the Yukon Northwest Territories, and PEI, Nova Scotia, 2-2 tie as they play the fifth. Two stones at the back of the 12-foot. This is the first stone for the Team Canada second, Diane Adams. Well, Heather won't fool around now, Linda. She'll play, you know, she'll play the defensive game, and she would just as soon roll that, that shooter out as anything else. Gives uh, Debbie Shermack a chance to come down and sit in front of it. As you say, Ray, Heather's basically in control with the three-point lead. Even if she gave up a two on one miss, she's still got that one-point lead, and she's looking like she's in good position. A big game for them. The difference tonight has been, I mean, Heather's throwing fantastic, and she's got a couple Please. of terrific yeah, rules. Like that last game was a perfect example of she, she was in a little trouble to give up two in that end, and all of a sudden she makes a great, a great oh, roll, yeah. forces Debbie Schurmack yeah. to draw the, you know, the button for one point, point. and okay. we saw the result. Some days, you know, you, you throw them well, but you don't get those things. That's what seemed to be happening. She wasn't throwing them that far off, and nothing was working for her. I think that's the great thing about curling, though, Ray. It's a team thing. And earlier in the week, Lorraine Lang was seeming to be the strong member of the team, hanging them in there later in the end. The front end was playing very well, but making some crucial shots later in the end to set up Heather, keeping her shots simpler. But now Heather's come right back with the big shot. Well, you know, the point well made is that it really is a team game. You can't, you know, it's so important that each member, you know, do the job. And when one member, team member, is not going well, it's just that much more important that, you know, that you turn it on. Diane Adams. Makes the hit and then jams that red Alberta stone on one of her own. But first and second shots still belong to Team Canada. And Debbie's playing a very smart end. She's drawing to the back rock. This is how you have to get back in that game. You need to get something in play. This lady's nickname, Vic, is Lady Die. Little last egg. Yeah. Yeah. I 
think I'd rather have Lady Di as a nickname than Lucy. And she draws it into the top of the eight foot. An update for you, the game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, 2-2 tie as they play the fifth final stone for the PEI skip, Kathy Galant, Charlottetown. An open draw for three. That thought maybe Linda, she maybe hit that and split another one. She really wanted to be greedy, but she went for the three and took it. And so as they take their fifth end break, it is now PEI five, Nova Scotia two. That split looked like it might be there. Well, it was a tough shot, and the three is a big edge for that game. I think the crowd was buzzing. Nova Scotia needs that win. Desperately. Nova Scotia, one of those rinks with a record of 7-3. Lorraine Lang makes the takeout. Oh, oh, what a great <laughs> shot and a break. Definitely, uh, she jammed it, got a little roll, a little wick off her own stone, and then killed the Alberta stone at the back. Uh huh. <laughs> that's that horseshoe. Yeah, that's one of those horseshoe shots. I think Vic, what they're referring to is one of the drivers here has given them a horseshoe from an actual horse because they needed some luck. A lot of funny little superstitions been developed throughout the week. Oh, Manitoba certainly has a number of superstitions going with their driver yeah. coming in the no same kind room. door all the yeah. time and they've got the same they tape in the tape deck Hurry. and she only wears her hair Hurry. a certain Hurry. way. Hurry. It's wild. No. But listen, it's oh, been working. Yeah, straight, straight. Here's a nice little shot. <laughs> Seven straight games. I think everybody yeah, has a few superstitions. We had about 50. <laughs> we didn't want to drive down a different route to the arena. Had to sit in the same seats in the car. Is that right? We had a bunch of them. One of those things where you don't really believe them, but then just maybe. Yeah, just maybe. Well, listen. Penny tonight, Penny Ryan has played lead for you at the Olympics. Has her lucky glasses on. She has her lime green laces in her shoes. Lorraine Lang. Great shot Whoa. by Penny as she played up to that Whoa. Team Canada stone at the back of the 12, and now she's no. in the shot Whoa. stone. Of course, Team Canada no. wanted to keep it cleaner than this. They didn't want these rocks to pile up in the back. And that one had to be in front. Okay. It couldn't slip to the back. That's too bad. Yeah, exactly what it does. Throw the horseshoe away. options either drawing to the open is that side in front of the two line line? or they've decided to try and almost play the same shot they played about three feet shorter than the one that's in the back of the T line and the intern draw Penny Ryan and her second stone here in the fifth end with Canada the defending champions Heather Houston leading 4-1 to play the other turn, which is the straighter turn, and try and hit it on the outside of the rock. Drive it past those ones at the back. 
You might get a little flop. It's what they commonly rock. refer to as the wall. And she's right. There's a wall of rocks behind it. She has to get it by. Ray has just left us for the moment. He has gone down to ice level for our interviews during yeah. the fifth end break. We just want to get a little bit on the outside. themselves a shot stone. Second shot don't belong oh, to one. Alberta at Redstone in the 12 foot at around oh, 8 o'clock. No, oh. Looking a little mystified. That one really curled at the end. Let's see if Alberta goes for the long roll again behind that corner guard or if they play the safe shot which is leaving it in the open. Thing is you can't drive this stone straight back either, uh, Linda, because there are some stones at the back, and that's the kind of thing you could jam it on. She'll have to move it past that one, but I don't think it's a problem. She can get the roll either way still. Heather Houston, Lorraine Lang. She wants to out turn here, and we'll run the center line for a while. stone for the Alberta skip Debbie Shermack here in the fifth inning. It jams and that yellow stone hangs around. The first and second shot do belong now to Alberta. And Heather went to school on that shot. She's going to play about the same height. She's going to try and sweep it early and get the roll towards the other red stone. What kind of week has it been for Debbie Sherman? That's been a frustrating week. It's difficult when you're the provincial champion. You know how well you can curl. She came and hasn't had a great week. She hasn't played badly. It's, again, the question of missing the wrong shots at the wrong time. Can she get the roll across onto that other red stone? She can roll right in front of it, which is a great shot, because then it would be difficult for Alberta to get rid of it. Doesn't really need the double kill, although she would be sitting quite a few, but the hit and roll would be a good shot. Thing, I'm just thinking, if we jam it on that back one, not roll right. Yeah. It's not really a problem about hitting this rock onto the back one. She'd still be sitting uh, first we'll and the same third way. shot. Make there sure we can that see. That knows what we're be going way here. back at the house. Yeah, yeah. Heather Houston in her final stone, looking for the hit and roll. Alberta does have the hammer, though. Holding it up. Now they're going to hit it to the other side, and she does drive it straight through. I don't think she expected it to curl that much. But as the game progresses, we've mentioned it curls more and more in this particular spot. So the opportunity now for Debbie Shermack to make the hit and stick and possibly pick up two here and cut the lead to just one. The second shot is the red stone just biting the eight foot. Just a nose hit for the two. Gonna be there, right there. He gets the inside roll to the top of the 
four, and Alberti Debbie Sherback comes through with the shot. Or two here in the fifth, and after five complete, it's now Team Canada, the defending champions, Heather Houston from the Lakehead Ladies Curling Cup. Four, and Alberta, Debbie Shermack. From the Shamrock Club in Edmonton, it's four to three. So many big games on the ice. Team Canada, one of those rinks with three losses. So is Saskatchewan, of course, so is Nova Scotia. As they all try and stay alive, we know that, of course, Manitoba will be in the playoffs. They're already through with a record of eight and three. Ray is standing by now with Heather Houston. Heather, terrific first five ends. Some timely rolls really have turned a few things around for you. Yeah, I understood through, through the best roll, too. Um, yeah, playing all right, and five more to go. Some games you get those rolls, and some games you don't, and you've really come on strong the last couple of games. Tremendous game this afternoon, and now tonight you seem to have it going your way. Well, we're all playing all right, and the ice is getting a little bit more familiar. Is it hard ice, Heather, to, to uh, defend on, to, to kind of play a defensive game? It's not easy peeling ice. Hard, not for our team, anyway. We don't play it, throw enough weight, and so we have a tough time peeling, so we're going to have a lot of rocks to play. Well, good luck in the back half of the game, Heather. Thanks, Ray. Ray, Heather, thank you very much. We'll return with more from this 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts when we come back to the Memorial Arena in Kelowna in just a minute. Do you feel restricted with your heating pad? Wires and cords imprisoning you? All tied up? Well, no more. Introducing the amazing Reef. Welcome back to Kelowna and this 15th round. Final round round of the round of the 1989 Scott Tuna of Hearts, Alberta, Team Canada, Lead Rocks. And the first was thrown by Alberta's Twyla Pruden, and this now is Tracy Kennedy. Team Canada lead in her first stone. It's 4-3, Canada leading. And Team Canada will try and get the bounce back with either keeping it clean this end or getting their two points. Cut. Trying to get control back after giving up the two. Tracy Kennedy makes the hit, rolls out. Now, is that something Heather said to Ray? It isn't good peeling ice, but certainly we've seen it as good curling ice. Yes, it's great curling ice, but when it swings this much, it's harder to take off the front rock. If the ice runs very straight, you just put the broom on the rock and fire away, and you seem to be able to get rid of them. But I think most of the curlers would rather have it this way. Have great ice, you can make virtually every shot. It's just a little bit tougher to make those peels. Twyla Pruden and her second stone putting up the guard. As Ray suggested earlier in the week, this ice really means you have to be a good reader of the ice. Uh, if it's straight, well, then you can always put the broom anywhere, or the brush anywhere. This time, uh, this kind of ice, you really have to know what you're doing. You have to map every little piece. It curls more in certain spots. You have to know that. Tracy Kennedy and her second stone. There we can see that they're not having trouble this end. No. The other thing is, they, Heather said they're not a big hitting team. Well, I think you'll find with a lot of women's teams, they don't throw as much weight as the men's teams. More of the players on the team throw that controlled weight. Unless you throw the bigger weight, your rock doesn't roll as far, so it's a little bit harder to make the peels anyway. Alexander, house is wide open. And again, going for the center line guard. And here is the aggressive play. Yeah, this is, isn't it? I mean, this is second stones and she's going behind. They got a little bit of trouble earlier when they tried this, so yep. a bit surprised again, but they're going for two. Yep. And this is the trouble. If you're going to go for this shot, the rock yes. has to be in front of the T line. The advantage goes right back to the other team when you make this kind of mistake. 
was uh, easy to say and hard to make the perfect shot, but it had to be in front of the tee line. Where now Alberta has a chance to come around that guard. Plan B stopped a little bit short. See if Heather now moves up to try and remove them. She's really jumping for the throat, isn't she, Linda? Yeah, I'm a little surprised. She could get rid of both of those rocks. Well, this is what I mentioned earlier. We were, you know, I was going to be waiting to see how aggressive she might be. And I guess with her lead suddenly cut to one, Heather realizes something. Well, she's still got control of the game, and uh, as Linda said, there's no reason to panic, but she feels good about herself now, I think. She's, you know, she's yes. certainly throwing it well, and, Hurry. and when she gets confident like that, she can be and has been a very Hurry. aggressive curler. Diane Adams is going to leave it short as well. Of course, she had a great line, didn't she, Linda? She did, a little more weight, and it would have tucked behind. Debbie Shermack does. She has a couple of options. Bump and ours up. Playing the raise on this rock here. Try and drive it straight back. You have the three rocks to get behind. And the shooter will be there. Third stone. And this is the first from Alberta's Penny Ryan. Yes, yes, Looking yes. for the raise. While a poop, Ryan Alexander worked the brushes, got it by, there's the tap, bump, 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 bad. she put it in the top of the four. Boy, lovely control. An update for in the game between Saskatchewan and Quebec. And this is the final stone for Agnes Charette. Buckingham Curling Club, can they get it by? She's got one, edge of the four. Oh, they'll work this for tomorrow and never get it there. But it's one for Quebec, and it's a 3-3 tie as they play the seventh. Saskatchewan's had a difficult few games. Some losses are now just hanging in there with Quebec. This shot, you can't miss it on the wide side. If you do anything, you have to rack on the guard, Linda. It's a difficult shot, she's called. Trying to just come around those rocks in front. It's so heavy out there. You can see how that dug in. It's getting to be a bit messy as far as Team Canada is concerned. I think Debbie Schirmack will probably play the same raise again. There. I don't know if we want to mess with that, but we can bump back that other one. Right. Go with the other turn, eh? Deb, what about the other turn? What about that turn? Well, they've decided not to disturb the rock that's guarding the shot rock, so they're going after the other rays. Pick your draws down there. Yeah. Doesn't she know the ice a little better on the other side, though, Lindo? They've seen so many intern shots played, uh, <coughs> out turn shots played down there. Yeah, there's least the No, that's the band. Penny was thinking about trying to keep it down the center, but they have played the other turn more. No, not a band. It's just not coming up. Well, it worked out not too badly. a wall out there. You better get something moved. What? An update for
for you the game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia. Last two stones. This is the last one for Pauline Jones. Her shooter spins out, leaving two stones for Prince Edward Island. Now it's the last star stone. The hammer for Kathy Galant, Charlottetown Curling Club. Oh, we just picked up three. One, two, three. And now it is seven to two, Prince Edward Island over Nova Scotia. Pauline Jones could be in big trouble with a record of 7-3. She cannot afford a loss. A bit of a shock there, Ray. Nova Scotia having a real struggle tonight. Well, she's got to get something moved off the front. Now, this is, I think, well, we'll talk about, maybe talking about it in a minute after Lorraine throws. One of the advantages, I think, or one of the things you see more in men's games is the ability to throw this very big weight, you know, to get all those rocks moving. The Marines gave this a good shot. We'll see what happens. What a great shot. I should say you should get a pat on the back for that one. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> Beauty. Beauty is right. <laughs> Here's a look at it. She catches it on the outside and drives it back onto the shot rock, filling them both. Thank you, thank you. Heather trying not to smile. Yeah. <laughs> it was a good shot. It sure was. He said that people, the lady curlers have some trouble, but earlier in this week, Pat Sanders, with the probably tiniest curler here, removed six guards at once, <laughs> one shot, when things were looking desperate. So sometimes if the angles are there, you can yeah. do it. No, I don't suggest that they can't do no, it. No, I do I'm just saying you don't see quite a much of it. That was an amazing shot. Yeah. And as uh, Heather said in, you know, in the interview in the fifth end, it's not easy ice to, to you know, to play a uh, spill shot, the split. Especially yeah. if the rock's on the edges. Debbie Shermack at her yeah. first stone. Yes, 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 yes. Playing that out turn. Hurry. And we'll tap back. Hurry. Or we'll come around. You're might trying get, to fall. Might get an either or Hurry. here. Hurry. Does a little ricochet and sits in the top of the eight on the center line. Well, so far in this game, Linda, Heather Houston's got two or three very, very big rules to set up extra points. And if she gets a roll here, she can set up the possibility of getting her deuce back. Looking to roll to the outside. I don't think you want to roll too much to the inside because of those red rocks that are lined up in front. As Linda suggests, she's coming down, trying to hit this on this side here and roll in behind these rocks. You don't want to play too close to these stones right here. Sure, I got good regular though. It may be close to normal. Just let her know. <laughs> this could be a big shot if she can get the roll. Yeah. Yeah. Hurry. She's got a couple this game. Hurry. Too thin, and it'll roll out. And the ring is wide open. With that regular weight, it just didn't want to come oh, over, and they thought it was going to. They were sweeping. You really can't uh, blame Lorraine for getting them on it because you know they had to break them a little bit there. And as we suggested, we didn't want to be. You don't want to be too close to those other yeah. two red rocks. So, and she wanted the outside roll. Shoot. Maybe she'll have a comment for us. I think that was a little bit too heavy, don't you? You think? Back tee. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Heather Houston definitely playing with more confidence after really a shaky start time. and uh, slump during midweek. Once it decides to curl. Heather's decided on the draw. She could play the raise. She would just hit it a little on the outside and 
race the back red rock, the one closest to the rings, in behind all the guards. She's decided for the draw. This will be the final stone for Alberta. Team Canada, Heather Houston does have the hammer here in the sixth end with Canada leading 4-3. Yeah. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. a little lucky on that one. I might have been tempted to play the raise because it was swinging so hard, but it did get partially covered with the tick. Heather's just going to draw here for one pick. That one run. There's no way she can remove yeah. this ray and blank the end. Well, I think she yeah. could. I think she just feels that, uh, you know, it's, it's a new spot and, and uh, I want my point. It's got to be full eight foot. Full eight foot. No hesitation. And that's, I think, Linda will do with this. You know, that's, if that's the way you feel, that's what you should be playing. There's no okay. point, you know. And six then, this is a critical point because yeah. she can go to that two point advantage and almost maintain that control, that good feeling. <laughs> Heather Houston draws the four foot, and she has her defending champions in front by two when we come back to Cologne. The action is fast and furious when the NHL plays live on TSN. The NHL's hardest hitting lineup provides exciting action on television's best NHL hockey schedule. TSN's The NHL Tonight leads the way with 40 games featuring the league's top teams. Next on The NHL Tonight, the Edmonton Oilers visit Civic Arena in Pittsburgh to battle the Penguins. Edmonton and Pittsburgh, Sunday, March 5th at 7.30 Eastern and only on TSN. Scores now in this 15th round of 1989. Scott Turner Park. It's all over. British Columbia wins 9 to 3 over Newfoundland in 6 10. So Julie Sutton's rink is now 7 and 4, but they'll need some help to make a playoff. Canada by 2 over Alberta as we go to the 7th. Saskatchewan, Quebec. Michelle Schneider in a big battle with Quebec. And Agnes Charette 3 3 playing the 7th. New Brunswick. Heidi Hanlon from Thistle St. Andrew scored five in the seventh to win 13-5. Now this New Brunswick egg also seven and four. Like BC, they'll need some help. And PEI ahead of Nova Scotia, 7-2 playing the seventh. An update for you on the game between Saskatchewan and Quebec. Final stone in the seventh end. Michelle Schneider, tart curling club Regina, makes the hit and stick for one. And so Saskatchewan, who need a win, lead 4-3 caught up at this 1989 Scott Turner of Hearts from Kelowna, British Columbia. Five sheets of ice, two are finished, three still in play, including ours, the game between Team Canada and Alberta. Playing second stones, this is Diane Alexander, the Alberta second, and her first shot. Cindy, you're a little surprised at this call? Down two, playing seven. Seems like teams aren't going after it until they have a better opportunity, but she could be playing a lot more aggressively. Heather's quite happy to exchange rocks. Sure, sure, she is. Absolutely. She'll run up and down this sheet all night. I think Debbie's got to start to chase her, just yeah. like Heather did earlier in the game. I mean, I think the well, a great believer that yeah. uh, you only get what you work for. Diane Adams makes the hit. They exchange stones at the top of the eight. She's pretty well forced to hit this one this time because it is right, you know, it's in the eight foot right in front of the four foot. 
in front of the button, but the last stone she played the takeout on was over on the edge of the 12 foot, you know. With the center wide open, so. Alexander makes the hit and gets the roll to a new spot on the ice. Wait up as you go into the frost. No problem. That'll be Penny Ryan's turn. Looks like Debbie's really waiting for the eighth end for her chance for two. She's just going and taking off all these rocks, exchanging stones. Oh, you're down to your thirds now, and she's already committed herself to play this way, so I guess there's no point, you know, changing it now, but every end that goes goes by you, Vic, you have one it, less, it's sure. gone, you know. Yep. And the you shooter know. will roll out this time. I won't knock him out in the third round. I'll wait till the ten. with my former teammate Penny having played that one. I'm very pleased to say that our fifth player in the Olympics, Patty Vandy, was inducted into the Canadian Curling Hall of Fame today, and that was a very proud moment for Patty. Congratulations to Patty. I should say. Patty also a really good friend of mine. That's really nice because she does, has done and is doing such a terrific job for curling. She's putting something back into the game, and she has participated in so many championships. She certainly deserves that award. Great lay. Patty and I spent uh, a couple months in Europe teaching curling a number of years ago. And another member of your gold medal ring, Lindsay Sparks, is already. She was inducted last year. In the Hall of Fame. One of the players here as well was named as a Hall of Fame member, and that's Colleen Jones. I don't think she's quite as happy tonight as she was when she was named she's earlier having today. Having a Hall of Fame kind of night. No. Currently trailing seven to two to PEI. Yeah. No. Penny Ryan, her second stone. Oh. Makes the hit and rolls over to the eight foot at around nine o'clock. Wide open here in the seventh. Normal. Just a reminder to stay with us after the game for the TSN turning point of the game. Yeah. Heather Houston and her first stone. Well, this end's gone to Heather's like and uh, she's just uh, been able to exchange stones. I'm sure she'd like the next few ends to play that way. Yeah. I, think, I think she's going to keep playing them into the rings and hope that Alberta maintains this cautious approach. I don't think uh, next, next end, you're right, I think Penny and Debbie will get together and say, hey, we better get going. And that TSN turning point of the game after the game, well, it's brought to you by Converse. The energy wave from Converse. Cons give you the power of the wave. Just one rock in play. Belongs to Team Canada at the back of the 12. They just exchanged stones, moved it around, and nobody's missed. 
Certainly not a very aggressive play from Alberta. And Debbie Shermack as they trail by two here in the seventh. Shermack in her first stop. Hurry, 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 an update for you, the game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, PEI, leading 7-2 as they play the seventh final stone. Colleen Jones, Halifax, curling club, one red stone just at the back of the forefoot. She's trying to draw a full four. It'll slide too much. They had a measurement, and it was a steal of another one for PEI, Kathy Gallant, Charlottetown. And Nova Scotia is in trouble. They trail by six. Now that's going to change things around a lot if Nova Scotia doesn't come back. But correct me if I'm wrong, the, for the teams with four losses to get in, there has to be two losses. In other words, Michelle uh, would have to, Schneider would have to lose as well. Is that correct? But the game is so close yeah, there, that's right. Two, two of the three teams have to lose in order for the others to be in contention. Interesting that two of the teams with four losses are off the ice early tonight. They both had easy wins, and I'm sure they're sitting in the stands doing a little praying at this point. Well, New Brunswick's Heidi Hanlon has had four losses, and British Columbia, Julie Sutton, Pat Sanders, and her rink, they're at four losses as well. But they will need some help, as you say. Those two other rinks, two of these three rinks, at three losses, would have to lose. Certainly Nova Scotia looks like they may be one. The other would have to be either Saskatchewan or... Team Canada. Well, Debbie, I'm sure, would like to blank this and uh, maintain control of last block playing the eighth end. And, and then I think I'm sure she she's not going to wait any longer. And she'll pull it all stops and see if she can't get herself uh, a couple of points. And get back into the game. Not that she's a long way away. A couple Two points will tie it up. This will be the final stone of the seventh end for Alberta. And if you have Debbie Sherback. and Alberta as they blank this seventh end. And when we come back, it is still the defending champions, Team Canada, leading by two. It's 5-3. More from Kelowna when we return. The difference between finding the perfect home and getting it could be right in your pocket. You need to know what you can afford before you start shopping for a home. With the CIBC pre-approved mortgage, you do. I'll arrange a flexible payment schedule for you to help you plan your budget in advance. And you're even protected while you're looking. This guarantees your interest rate for 60 full days. It's almost like money in your pocket. Come and see me for details. Get us working for you, the IBC. Ticket counters, ticket takers counting the money. Been a very successful promotion here in Kelowna this 1989. Scott Turner of Hartford, Barometer at the Kelowna Curling Club said, Folks, we've broken even. Congratulations, organizing committee. You've done a 12 job well done. British Columbia wins 9-3 over Newfoundland. Canada leads 5-3 over Alberta. Debbie Sherback's got to get it going now. Saskatchewan, Quebec. It is 4-3 Saskatchewan. 4-3 Saskatchewan as they play the seventh. And he runs with the winner, 13-5. And PEI, 8-2 over Nova Scotia. This uh, Alberta took the first rock out, out in front, and uh, that's the rock that's sitting out in front of the ring of the Redstone. And Heather Houston 
decided to go right around it. You know, she had a lot of success last in playing it, you know, playing it pretty wide open and clean, but she decided, no, I'm just going to, you know, go around it and, and I'll play this, uh, this end closed if that's the way you want to play it. But it's, uh, you know, Debbie Schermack has got to try a lot of things to get herself in the game, so I'm surprised that, that Heather didn't split that off. She looks like she's going for the steal. It would be a big point, but she doesn't want to get in trouble. No, that's Diane for sure. Adams. Chance here for a little roll. Diane Alexander. Queen, queen, yeah, uh, no. Whoa, whoa. Yes, yes, hurry. Gets the hit, gets the outside roll, and he gets to drive it through the back. Gerda has a couple in there, and Team Canada needs a good roll here. Diane Adam. Yep. Going for the out turn. They've played this spot. Heather had a good roll earlier in the game. See if they can get it again. Did she miss the uh, miss the brush in there? Must the call. I think she thought it was going to curl more. Must have been thrown well. Just didn't make it. Too much sweeping. Eighth end action. Here in Kelowna, Team Canada leading 5-3 over Alberta. This will be the second stone for the Alberta second. This is Diane Alexander. Good chance for a roll here. Could really close this end up a little bit. Sounds like she may have got outside a bit. You don't want to drive it back with the back one. Look out. You can hit it or you can do this. What okay. do you think, Linda? Well, the aggressive play would be to try around. to come around the guard. The rock, the Yellowstone's at the back of the house, and it is an opportunity if they leave it back there and play to the side for the other team to come around that center guard. If they can get this half tucked around, it would be a good shot. Lorraine Lang and her first stone, the Team Canada third. When you call the aggressive shot in the distance, you have to make these. Where is it? You don't have last rock. Yep. Yep. You like to remove yep. your opposite stone from the ring. But it's still a game of pressure, and by coming around this uh, guard and getting to the top of the eight foot, you can put a lot of pressure on Debbie Shermack. It just stays out, Linda. It's been an interesting spot. As soon as you play a little bit further into the eight foot with the ice, it goes very straight. Cut down the ice a little bit, and it overcurls and seems to get too close to the center guard. Shot Stone continues to be that yellow rock at the back of the 12. That belongs to Dean Canada. Penny Ryan in her first stone. This one's oh, caught that same there. straight Just spot. hanging on that line, right on the edge. Look at this. Gee. Oh, you're welcome. Penny says you're, you're welcome. welcome. Bit of a gift. And the weight was close. Just didn't come up. Bumps it up to the button, and now Heather Houston flies too. Well, I think we're going to go the other way, though. <laughs> Since <laughs> that something strange is going on over there. Let's forget that out yeah, there. That's let's right. let's, let's try that other side. This is a 
important thing too though, Ray, except the fact that it seems to be doing something a little different. Don't keep playing the same ice. Go to the other turn and see what happens. The guard over curls coming that direction. The raise is there. There's a front rock right in front of that yellow stone that's on the button. Yeah, but I did it with the out turn, not the in turn. <laughs> you can see uh, Debbie Schirmack looking at the angle. She's going to try and drive the red one straight back onto the shot stone that sits on the button. Stone for Penny Ryan. Oh, so close. Penny was yelling whoa all the way down, but Debbie thought it might make it a little move. They had the brushes on it for a while. Those are hard rocks to judge. Of course, the longer the distance between the rock that you're trying to raise and the rock in the house, the harder it is to get the angle. Yep. Big steel oh, here, okay. and Team Canada might be able to put a cap on this one, right? Well, height. Heather Houston Biters says, just come down to this important. area right here, sit it right in that spot right there. I don't know what happened on the other side. It just also she can't guard straight. everything. She either has to guard the hole and try and come in a little bit, or guard the raise, and she's playing the hole shot. It's the first skip stone, and it's from the defending champion, Heather Houston. Narrow. over curled as well. They're getting a lot of movement and it's a little bit heavier on that side. What kind of a fork does that look like? Oh no, I think it is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tap that red one back. What they're looking at is, uh, you can hear Penny say, Linda, yeah. is, there a, is there a port there? Or should we play okay, the tap back? Okay, so let's see. It doesn't look like she a very big port there. No, it doesn't to me either. You're going to throw more weight than Yeah, then look, it might be a bit stickier out here. Look at that frost line right. It shouldn't be that bad. Think you need that much? Yeah, I was thinking I might need a little more. We have to angle it, though, hey? I only want to catch half that rock. No, you want to catch three quarters of it. Well, yeah, three quarters to half. I think you need no, about three quarters yeah, of it. Yeah, about three quarters. Even straight on, it would drive it yeah, back towards right back the Yellowstone. Right. So you, you need quite a bit of this front red rock. Just raise that one back. Yeah. Very big stone here for Alberta Skip, Debbie Shermack. Trying the raise as she Goes after that red stone of hers just off the right side of the center line, about a foot and a half in front of the rigs. And her first shot here in the eighth, trailing 5 3.
just digs in when it's outside there. Just that much heavier out there. They really didn't have the line on the raise, even if it had the weight. Well, you heard Penny say, you know, you think that's too much ice? And she, I, and I think far. she just had, you know, just a little too much ice because she had to throw more weight. It cer certainly didn't curl very much there. Right down that line. Now, if Heather can put the guard on, that raise is really a tough one. Either side, it would be very difficult for Alberta to get into the forefoot. Yeah. Keep it out that far. Yeah. She's trying to cover the two rocks yeah. that have Looks been played like on the side of the sheet. She covers those two stones, and she covers up those two red yeah. ones and takes away and any angle raised. I, I can't see a shot that Debbie Shermack's going to have. Well, there is a red rock on the other side of the house, but it's a tough raise. Well, yeah, that's right. She could be come across in it. Heather Houston and her final stone here in the eighth. Alberta does have the hammer. That may not do any good. And this is out in the frost. Oh, they're going to have to work on this. Oh, boy. Tracy Kennedy, Diane Adams working it. Did they get it across? Yes, they did. An update for you. The game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia. It's 8 to 2. PEI leading final stone for Colleen Jones. Halifax Curling Club. She's got one, two. Now, if she can raise that little red rock there, get it out of there, she does, bumps it, gets the roll in, put three on the board, and they're not dead yet. Colleen Jones clawing her way back. It's eight to five, going to nine. Well, as you suggested, Linda, Debbie Shermack's going to play that raise. It's all she really has, I think. Now this is a spot that hung for a long time before it broke in. Got a lot of ice there. She had to throw that raised weight too, you're right. It almost looks with that much ice that she might be coming around it, but I don't, I don't know if she can catch enough of the forefoot. The final stone of this eighth end for Alberta. Trailing 5-3 and facing a couple of wait. Team Canada counters. Yeah. Got the line. But it's coming. There's the bump. Now how far can they bring it back? Can they cut them down? They sure are. Can they get more? They just may. What a shot. It's a good thing you and I were calling. Oh, what a great shot by that lady, Debbie Shermack, as she makes the raise of about six to seven feet to pick up one, and it's 5-4. Team Canada leading. Update for you, the game between Saskatchewan and Quebec. We want to show you eighth end action. Last two stones, Quebec with the hammer. Saskatchewan in front, 4-3, final stone. Michelle Schneider, Regina, makes the hit and then rolls over. Final stone, hammer. Agnes Shedd at Buckingham Curling Club will make the takeout, squeeze it through right there, kill them. One, two, three yellow stones, three on the board for Quebec, and they've moved in front of Saskatchewan, six to four. That would be good news for Nova Scotia, who are also losing. Hello, everybody. We're in Kelowna, British Columbia for the 1989 Scott Turnout of Arts. The symbol of excellence, Rolls-Royce. And of all the magnificent automobiles bearing this crest, there is one single classic that surpasses all others, the legendary Silver Ghost. Now recreated by Franklin Mint Precision Models in a collector's piece so exceptional, it's the official model authorized by Rolls-Royce Motor Cars. The Silver Ghost, only one was ever built. The 1907 masterpiece that established Rolls-Royce as a master car builder. It passed every endurance test of its time and still runs perfectly today. The priceless flagship of the Rolls-Royce line, now in a stunning die-cast model with protectively coated silver-plated trim. And assembled from more than 127 pieces, each feature is authenticated by Rolls-Royce motor cars, like the removable spare tire, sterling silver-plated trim, exactly like the original. 
tiny instruments, pedals and controls. Engine detailing precise to the last spark plug. You can almost hear the ghost-like hum of its motor. Details to satisfy the most demanding car enthusiast and sophisticated collector. A showpiece for home or office. To order, call 1-800-543-1012. Use your credit card or mail 3625 by check or money order to the Franklin Mint. You will be billed the balance in three monthly payments of 3625 each. With your model comes a history and certificate of authenticity signed by Rolls-Royce Motor Car. The imported Silver Ghost is available only from Franklin Mint Precision Models with the die-cast metal craftsmanship of models costing thousands of dollars. Now only four payments of $36.25 each. Call 1-800-543-1012. The Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost, a most incredible model of the world's most incredible car. There's nothing quite like owning a Rolls-Royce. Just a reminder, you can see the semifinal of this 1989 Scott Turner of Hearts. We'll have it for you here on TSN. Now, make a note of it, please. It is Friday, March the 3rd, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Some of the TV guides may have 9.30, but please make a note. It is 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 Pacific, semifinal here in Kelowna and the 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts. Here are all the scores as we get you caught up in the 15th round. British Columbia winner, 9-3. and three. So they're waiting to see what happens. They finish 7-4. and four. Canada's lead cut to one on that great shot by Debbie Shermack of Alberta. Saskatchewan trailing by two. They really can't afford a loss. Quebec in front. New Brunswick now 7-4, and four, waiting to see what happens. And Prince Edward Island ahead of Nova Scotia's Colleen Jones fighting to come back and avoid a playoff. Well, as I said to Cindy as we finished the last end, it's a good thing you and I weren't calling the ice on that shot because Debbie Shermack obviously knew exactly how much it would come and she it didn't get hung up from the frost line and it came over perfectly. She paid absolutely a super shot. I mean, the game is literally over if she doesn't make that shot. She raised it right to the forefoot. She had the perfect weight. A terrific shot. It was great. We've been worried because they had stopped playing that turn. Yeah. It run so straight. Penny's Rock actually raised the other team into that button position. And Linda, I rely on you as the gold medalist skip to call the ice, please. Remember, <laughs> I'm a lead. I'm retired. <laughs> what can I say? Center line guard as Diana, Diane Adams with her first stone. Team Canada got the little hit and roll. And this will be the second stone for the Alberta second. Diane Alexander. She'll just run that front off. That was a great draw. They're really putting the pressure on Team Canada. A long race like that, like a shot like yeah. that, can really puff you up, can't it? And it can really get you going. A real boost at this point. You know, for a moment, you think you're out of the game, it's going to be over. All of a sudden, you skip makes a shot like that. You think, you know what? We can come back in this thing. Say, waste no time and peels off that guard. Sitting on the edge of the seat in Thunder Bay tonight. Mm -hmm. And at the Tartan Curling Club, I'm sure in Regina, at the Halifax Curling Club, as they all wait and see what happens to these rinks with records of seven and three. And in the stands, the teams with the four losses are a little anxious as well. A little praying, you think? Oh, definitely. Penny Ryan. for Team Canada. Yeah. Even if they hit and roll away, they'll be in the house, and I think Alberta will have to get rid of it. <laughs> Lorraine. 
Jade Lang, the team candidate third, and this is her first stone. Just on the edge of the 12. As long as it's in play, Alberta has to go after it. Well, you don't have to. Well, <laughs> I think they feel that they've got this game so close now after being down a little bit. They don't want to give up an end here, too. Yes, hurry. Well, hurry. Yeah, Ryan, just hurry oh. right away. This is a straight no. spot out in the frost. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't think you get to rely on uh, Heather Houston to miss a wide open shot, though. So you, you, know, you have to make a decision. Do I want to close it up? Do I want to try and steal it? Do I want to play the guard? She played the hit. She lies, too. after the hit and roll. Okay. Rolls the other way. For those of you that keep stats, who are interested in the stats, Heather Houston is at 91%. Tracy Kennedy once again has been playing sensational all week long. She's at 80. Two great games by Heather. 93 and she's at 90 in this game. But not even easy shot. She's no. making great shots. That's a good point. He's got a hit and stick here. Lie two. Force Heather to at least to take the one point. Debbie Shermack and her first stone. Yep. 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 No. Yep. 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 Hurry. Hurry. She does just that at the back of the four. the other turn. I don't think she likes playing down that center line as much as the other team. Just a little more weight than I expected from her too, Linda. I think Debbie will try and maybe yeah. play. Yeah. She will play to the other Same side of the eight, but try and tuck it a little bit there. around that rock yeah, and force Heather to make the cold draw. Or, or as she indicated, she could put it on the edge of the forefoot and make her hit. I got out of that pretty well, didn't I? You did. Good call. Just try and put it in that same spot. There's a little bit of a fall there. Let's talk about that a little bit. You know, it's, it's a situation where, you know, do, do we want to make her draw or do we want to make her hit the stick? And it's obviously Debbie Shermack and Penny Ryan. And let's put it in the same spot. Maybe a touch of a tricky spot and force her to make the hit and stick for her single. 
they've seen her draw. Maybe they do think that that's the harder shot for the hit in this spot. The only thing about it, this situation is that, you know, Heather's going to play the hit for sure, because if she hits and rolls out, it's not a major, major loss to her. She maintains that last rock going home. Yeah, oh, just guys. be tied. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa. Up here. That's not moving. Whoa. She got it. Puts it on the fourth foot. An update for you on the game between Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, final stone. Kathy Gallant, Charlottetown Curling Club. She'll make the hit and stick on that stone. See the back of the eight foot leading eight to five. One, two more. And now Prince Edward Island leads ten to five for Colleen Jones of Nova Scotia as they go to the tenth end. Turn hit for a single, two up, lead coming home. See if she plays a little more controlled weight to put this one. First one ran very straight. Oh. Missed the final stone. Houston makes the hit, gets the inside roll of the button to pick up one. And after nine complete, Heather Houston will lead by two. As we go to the tenth end, then Alberta will have the hammer. Four from Kelowna in the 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts in just a minute. How would you explain it? A woman in Wisconsin is doing the dishes when suddenly she's possessed by a terrifying feeling. She's positive that her young daughter has just been in an accident. She quickly makes a desperate phone call, only to learn that her feeling was true. How would you explain this? A dozen people around the world who never met each other describe an encounter with a being from space, and their descriptions of the creature match almost... In front. Quebec leading. New Brunswick has already won. And PEI, it's a final score now, 10 to 5 over Colleen Jones of Nova Scotia. Which certainly means at this point, there's going to be a playoff. If Saskatchewan continues to lose, and they lose the game, they're down by four. There's going to be four teams with a record of seven and four, which means they will play off for the third, uh, third spot or a spot in the semifinal. And it's a big break for New Brunswick. Right. and British Columbia. Who had to sweat it out here just watching. Well, Debbie Chermack needed a few things to get around, and she certainly got that. She's got, uh, you know, Tracy Kennedy has played so well, and she was peeling a rock with uh, her second shot and she missed one out in front and now there's a couple corner guards up there and Heather Houston wants to get them off so you can see her standing up beside the long corner guard. She's asking Diane Adams to split her off of there. Alexander settles in. She's got a good chance here to at least uh, set up the, the possibility of scoring her two points, Vic. She's got the guards out there. Well, it's been a night of the spoiler, and uh, certainly Alberta would play that role here if they could beat Team Canada. It sounds like a movie, the night of the spoiler. Uh, spoiler. What a I'll night, though, for curling. You just sometimes think that things are going to proceed a certain way, and it never seems to go that way. And as we said before, difficult to peel on this site. We heard it from Heather. We're seeing it here. Yeah, that's all right. Hit on. 
trying to get something out of there. Boy, yeah, this no, is yeah, a buzz. I don't think people can believe it. Of course, BC, New Brunswick sitting back and they thought maybe they were out of it. And now they're back in it. Lorraine Lang. Opens it a little bit. Twelve and a half, eh? Okay. Alberta trying to go around the corner. It'll be interesting to see how this end proceeds because there may get a point where if too many rocks are tucked behind, Team Canada is going to face a big decision with this strategy. Obviously, uh, Debbie yeah. Schumacher feels nope. a little better about okay. his outturn come around yeah. as opposed to going around the long one with the in turn. Because yeah. you have a little more okay. room past that one. But They've got it oh. by. Now oh, where no, will it no. stop? Okay. Tucks itself in just behind the T line, full eight foot. And that's how you get your two. See Deb, uh, Heather I'm walked up. You got that. Try and listen. Yeah, you don't have half. You only have a quarter. You only have a quarter. It can play, it can play it tight with regular. You're going to play it tight. Make sure that you get one or the other. You got to get the front one if you don't get the back one. You can't miss them on the on the you wide side. You don't want one of those little feathers on that front one no. either. Bang it off or hit the one in the house. There's a good look at it right there. Yep. Here it comes. Lorraine Lang. enough it removed it from in front of the rock. All right, do you go in again or do you put one back up in front to protect that stone? You're still only throwing third stones here. No, I think you go in around the other guard now. You got your two points set up, Vic. You know, maybe it was your second or your or your lead throwing, you might uh, guard it. All right. But no, you got you got your tie now. Theoretically. On paper. possibility of getting more than one rock behind this guard. If you get this one around, the other team will have to go after the open rock. And then you could maybe tuck a second one around. And it's long enough to get a couple of the guards long enough so they'll work. Right. You want this back a bit, yep. Linda. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Penny was nice draw. Oh yeah. And Penny Ryan comes through. Then they make a very good point here, Vic. You know, if you if you hit this and you don't uh, roll towards the forefoot and be shot, then the, the choice for Debbie Shermack is to go right around that guard and come down on the face of the stone that's buried in behind the long guard, the, <coughs> the long yellow guard, and set up the possibility of maybe scoring three. So it's imperative that Heather Houston hits this and rolls for shot towards it's the important that we forefoot. stick around here. Oh, yes, there she there is. She said it's the same thing. Talk about a couple of scenarios. <laughs> if Canada wins this, they will finish tied with Manitoba with records of 8-3. Canada 
by virtue of their win over Manitoba in round robin play would be first and Manitoba second. I'll tell you a little more in just a second. First stone here for Heather Hughes. Hurry, Scotia, Saskatchewan, BC, and New Brunswick would then play two tiebreakers to determine who will get into the semifinal. You need the inside rule a little bit. Eh? That's if Canada wins. Or the other rule. Couple of choices here. There is a guard out here protecting that stone in the ring. Now you could come right around here and get into this area here and lie to just like that. Or you could do what she's doing and come down and sit on the face of this one to lie to. Freeze to that one. And things are not going Team Canada's way. The only thing about the freeze, Linda, is by coming this way, is that, you know, Heather could come around the other way then and freeze on the face of the stone that sits behind the tee line and take the other side of the sheet away from you. I almost think it may have been better for her to go around the long, long guard to the top of the eight foot for second shot, fully buried. I was saying that before, Heather's going to have to decide depending on where this sits. What kind of strategy change? Right up on top. I would have cut the other way, I think. If she can hit that now and remove it, as long as she doesn't drive it back onto the back one. Come around that way. Because not, she can't ignore it. What's she going to do if we do this? Hit for three? Yeah, we'll make it perfect. If she makes the take up, the jam's really they, easy. They can only get there two. Yeah, I, She's a little worried about jamming it back, but it does have room between the two rocks. And you're not going to get, you're not going to get, she's going to have free drop for two. Yeah, she will anyway. We'll have to try the other one. Same one I just threw. She has to cross this just a little bit. Get back. Hit it on the nose. Penny Ryan in the foreground just that behind her. The skip to Debbie Shermack. Like One stone to come for them, and it could be the yeah. stone that well, I think forces an extra end. Anyway. Team Canada leading by two, 6 4 over Alberta. The defending champion, Heather Houston, and this is her final stone here in the 10th. of an extra in here, Linda. And they've always been exciting too. There's been a lot of rocks in play in the extra end. Getting back to that difficult ice to peel. Debbie Shermack needs full eight foot for her second point and an extra in. And I really can't remember the last time the last draw of a round robin has meant so much. Every game has been deciding the playoff position. Team Canada win or an extra end? All comes down to this shot by Debbie Shermack. Watch it. Yep. Well, whatever you think, though, I would have to say. Yep. Alexander. Twyla Pruden working it hard. Penny Ryan now out to help. They really have to make it go. They have to make it go. Can they get it there to the eight? They need a good piece of the eight. Will they get it there enough? It may have curled you up. Is she there? Yeah, Lorraine Lang says yes, she's there. Put two on the board for Alberta. And we're going to an extra end here in the 15th round. Oh, and you 
Newfoundland. Canada, 6-6 tie. We're going to an extra end with Alberta. Saskatchewan, Quebec has won there, 8-4. New Brunswick, 13-5 over the Yukon Northwest Territories, and PEI beats Nova Scotia in a night of upset here in Kelowna. And it means there will be tiebreakers. And if Canada, in this extra end, get their point with the hammer, we will have a tiebreaker game for you tomorrow on Friday at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. We'll have the tiebreaker to decide the third, third place and a spot in the semifinal. And of course, we will have the semifinal game for you at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, from here in Kelowna. One stone in the rings. That's at the edge of the four. It belongs to Alberta. Abby Shermack puts down the brush for her second. Diane Alexander. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Keep it clean. Alberta's got something going. There was a rock yeah. that was nose hit and was short, and they came right around it, looking okay. for the guard on this one. That's good. That's good. That's good, Carla. Shot done. Diane Alexander puts up the guard. And no hesitation from Heather Houston right up beside it for Diane Adams. Well, Team Canada looking to peel and Ray, it's not easy to throw up all these guards. They got the draw in the house very early and they're going to have to try and guard it. I remember what uh, Heather told you, Ray, is that she does not like to peel. She's not a good peeling team. The ice is not conducive to doing that. Go Pretty good one there, Vic, but yeah. you're right. She did, you know, it, it's the kind of ice that's not as easy uh, to peel on as some others, you know. There's a frost line. Very interested observers, the rink of British Columbia. You see Pat Sanders there, Regina Hawks, Melissa Saligo, the fifth, Diane Nelson. Hello there. Yeah, you're going to be in a playoff. Hi, Bob. <laughs> Good. Yeah, keep it clean. 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 Clean it. Yep. Yep. Hurry. Hurry. Well, just keeping it clean. The line looks good. Shot. Nice shot, that. Pretty good looking guard so far. Two for two. One good thing about this spot for Team Canada is it looks like it's fairly straight with this turn. It runs true, too, Linda. It's it not uh, yeah. really consistent. Debbie Shermack, what do you do this time? Keep putting it back. Keep putting it back perfectly. Heather Houston's going to have a draw to the full four foot, not just to win the game, but for first place. And I think the extra pressure is certainly going to be felt when she throws that one if she has That's right, the bye to the final That's if she right, happens yeah. to win this game. Right. She's not thinking about that, that right now, I don't right think now. so. Please. No, please. It's a good Keep point to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Team yep. Canada, Three. if they Three. win this game, would get first place oh, again because no. they beat oh, Manitoba oh. in the round robin. Both oh. rings would have records yep. of eight and three, but Heather Houston was a winner in round three over Chris Moore. He's a straight peel. Would you risk trying to drive it straight back and kill both of them or just go for the for the guard? You definitely want the guard off. You can't risk driving it straight back. Even if you drive it straight back and make the double, you're going to leave something in play. What would be nice, though, Lindsay, if you just caught a little on the outside and just caught the back one as it Just moved by. it off the That's forefoot right. anyway. But we're only on uh, Lorraine's yeah. first rock. Lorraine Lang. Hurry! 
must have curled a lot more. Oh, oh that's exactly it. That's a big <laughs> shot. That's what we were just talking about, Dick. You don't want to risk leaving it there, but that was a good shot. Ooh. Now, the one Alberta Stone remains in play in the back of the 12 foot, just hanging on around 4 o'clock. Back of the 12th was a different story than biting the forefoot. Four foot. Big difference. Penny Ryan and her second stone here in an extra end. Here. They're going right back to the center line guard. Whoa, clean. Keep it clean. Nice shot. Certainly the front end hasn't let down Debbie Shermack in this extra end, have you? Played very well. Anything she's asked, all three have given her. Twyla Pruden on the right, Diane Alexander on the left. Right, the spoiler roll is tough, but you have to approach every game in a round robin the same way. They want the win, obviously, but you have to play just as tough on the last one to make it fair for everyone. What the rule is off now. Sorry. Too good. Oh, look at that. Oh, right. That'll help. Throw one up there again. She, she just played two shots. I'll try and get on this Absolutely side. Absolutely. Okay. The, the best you could possibly play them. I mean, the first one she got, the move the back one off, she couldn't hit it any better. And, you know, she was asked to spill with that one, but in, and she came off it perfectly, spun it off, and she puts her own shot into the rings for now, Shot Rock. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. Maybe the only thing that you could have done there is move that yellow one right out of the ring. Yeah, it's still a good looking it shot. Sure Skip Stones now in this extra end. Team Canada with the hammer. This first one will come from Alberta's Debbie Shermack. Right back up on top, you heard her say. Let's throw it out in front. Heather Houston has watched her rink make all the peel she's asked them to. Now it's her turn with her first stone here in this extra end of a 6-6 six, six tie. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, they, Heather, you heard her say it in the break at the fifth end that we're not a good peeling team, but they've sure done a great job in this end, haven't they, Linda? They have so far. This is a big one. A big one here. Hurry! Oh, oh, oh. This one's over curling, I think. sick about that, doesn't she? Sounds so simple. Just get rid of that still front guard. Feel. Not an easy shot. Still can't feel, she says. <laughs> you know that's why I don't play these. <laughs> Hips don't get a lot of practice at those. <laughs> but that's a good line. Now you know why I don't play lead. You see how tough it is to play lead, Mr. Browder? <laughs> oh, he said it was easy. No, that's that. You're a skip iron, not that cute. Oh, yeah. They don't even let me walk down to the end. Yeah. <laughs> just stay down there, Vic. <laughs> you right. brush, you just do the brushing. <laughs> Debbie playing the same turn as she played with her guard. <laughs> she 
can get this right around and touch the button. It's perfect. Ball shot stone is Team Canada stone, and it is top eight. So she's going to need full eight. More better. Start to, Coming down. Start to dig in a bit. Good looking shot. Tucking around. Here it comes. Where will it stop now? Just over the button. And just hold on back and forth. Debbie Shermack has come up with a couple of great shots. A terrific shot. Lindy, this is really dramatic. Now you've got your reigning Canadian champion. And you've got her getting into the hack. She has to draw full to the forefoot to catch part of the button. And if she does it, she goes to the final to repeat. This, this is tremendous. She's decided to go with the out turn. She could play either turn to get to the button. I think she'll just try and follow the shot right down. It's a dead draw, no backing. It's a good point. Unless we yell for line and then, then we're tight. No backing. Just a draw. I think Chris Moore's, Moore's watching this shot. Huh. Well, if you say this is first place, if not, Manitoba has it. It's all on the line right here for the defending wow. champion, Heather Houston from the Lakehead Ladies Curling Club yeah. in Hurry. Thunder Bay. This one's catching the swing early. will go into a five-ring playoff for the final two spots. And Debbie Shermack plays the role of the spoiler as she steals one and wins it by a score of seven to six. Team Canada now seven to four. And Chris Moore, wherever you are, you have gotten yourself and your Manitoba rink a bye to the final. We'll have more from this very exciting 1989 Scott Tournament of Hearts when we come back to